Since the release of ChatGPT from OpenAI, there have been a lot of interest in replicating ChatGPT's success in open source world. There is not a single model until very recently where we covered Raven that can almost replace ChatGPT or give ChatGPT like performance. ChatGPT has been one of the outstanding models released in the recent times. I shouldn't say released because OpenAI never released the model. Let's say ChatGPT is one of the best large language model in the recent time that humans felt that it is true AI. It's not AGI definitely, but it has true artificial intelligence capabilities that you can literally see why everybody has been talking about ChatGPT. Because of the same reason, a lot of people have been trying to replicate that success that can run locally on your computer. There are a lot of reasons why people want to run models locally on computer. And one of the easiest reasons you could see is what is happening with stable diffusion. Even though OpenAI DALI came before stable diffusion, but because stable diffusion came as an open source model, it has completely demolished OpenAI DALI. And in fact, stable diffusion can run on devices like iPhone and iPad. And I've got my own tutorial where I showed a demonstration of an iPad application where stable diffusion runs locally on the device, which means you can run a large language model on a local computer without having the data to leave your computer. This is quite important for a lot of enterprise and a lot of people who respect privacy. Having said that, in the last couple of days, there has been a huge rise in a lot of open AI chat GPT alternatives, like chat GPT alternatives, open source models with proper licensing has been on the rise. And today I wanted to cover three different models that have been recently released and everybody has been talking about it. I would like to give you a highlight of these three models. I ideally want to make hands-on tutorial about these three models, but by the time I want to make a video, I think there'll be another five models. So I don't want to further delay in sharing the news about these models and what do I feel about these models. So to start with, we're going to start with a model called Dolly from Databricks. Now Databricks is a company that has this hosted Jupyter Notebook kind of software where you can write code. So what they're saying is, hello, Dolly, democratizing the magic of ChatGPT with open models. Now they've got a lot of information here. I would like to take you to the exact specific of what Dolly is. Now there is a GitHub repository. If you go see the GitHub repository, you can see the details in the first few lines. Databricks Dolly, a large language model trained on the Databricks machine learning platform, a plug for their platform, demonstrates that a two years old open source model, GPTJ. GPTJ is a model from Eleuther AI. I think it came around the time of GPT-3. So GPTJ, a two years old model, can, when subjected to just 30 minutes of fine tuning on a focused corpus of 50K records, Stanford Alpaca. So once again, Alpaca is in the picture. So what they have done is they've taken GPTJ, which is like a raw large language model, and they've fine tuned GPTJ on Stanford Alpaca. I think this is the formula a lot of people have learned since the launch of GPT 3.5 and OpenAI chat GPT or I should say even much before that with Instruct GPT, that a large language model when fine-tuned or when Instruct fine-tuned with instructions, it's going to perform completely much better than uh, having a raw large language model, especially in a conversational setup. And that's exactly what they have figured out here and saying that exhibit surprisingly high quality instruction following behavior, not characteristic of the foundation model on which it is based. Which means while the GPTJ model itself cannot do this stuff, the newly fine-tuned model, which is fine-tuned on instruction dataset, Alpaca dataset, can provide surprisingly high-quality instruction behavior. So we believe this finding is important because it demonstrates the ability to create powerful AI technologies, it's vastly more accessible than previously realized. What the point here is that just within 30 minutes of training, if you can take an existing large language model and fine-tune it on just 50,000 records, like it's not even like a lot more than that, just 50,000 records and if it can give really good result, I think this opens up a huge, huge arena of new large language models that can pose a threat to ChatGPT. I don't I don't think like it necessarily poses a threat to ChatGPT given that how ChatGPT has quite integrated in the lives of a lot of people. But imagine ChatGPT is um, Windows operating system. Um, you always want some Linux operating system and that's exactly what these models will provide for hackers, for developers, for people who respect their privacy, 
for people who do not want to use a hosted service from a big corporate then i think alternatives like this will be a lot helpful and that's like this dolly from databricks is actually setting a new path for that so please note that while gpt j 6 billion parameter model is an apache 2.0 licensed the alpaca dataset is licensed under creative commons dolly is intended exclusively for research purpose and not licensed for commercial use that's completely fine because now we got the formula how to do and what to do very unfortunately this model is not released anywhere so this dolly 6 billion model the model weight is not released anywhere if you want to use this model one you have to request them there is there is a there is somewhere you can actually write to them and request them yeah you can contact them if you want to get access to the trained weights so that you don't have to use your own computation um, and you can access a blog post that talks about democratizing, democratizing magic of chat gpt with open models the model is not open um, it's it's again not not a criticism of what is happening here but there is a huge announcement but there is not a single place where you can find model weight there is formula how you can train um, there is a plug for databricks notebook you can go train but the model itself is not available right now like if you want to right now use it you cannot use it because you have to write to databricks and get the model weight that's fine but still i appreciate the fact that they've put together this blog post except this model is not available when the blog post title says open models democratizing all these things that's good that's the first model which is databricks dolly the next one that i wanted to talk about is another very interesting model a group of models it's called cerebras gpt so this is from a company called cerebras so what are they saying a family of open compute efficient large language model i think that is that is one of the most important aspects of cerebras gpt it's a family of open compute efficient large language models unlike dolly this model is literally available on hugging face model hub for you to use all the models in fact like all the cerebras models are available in the hugging face model hub right away for you to use like you can go see the model weights are available there is nothing hidden so unlike unlike dolly and databricks i really appreciate cerebras for uh, when they said open the model is actually available not just the formula to make a model okay so now what is cerebras here i think they started with a really good comparison of where the large language model landscape is today if you look at the models open a gpt4 everything is closed you don't know the model architecture you don't know the training data there is not model weight no checkpoints um it, is it compute optimal training no uh, license uh, or you don't know license is not available deep mind chinchilla uh, model architecture is open compute optimal training but everything else is not there meta opt uh, we have covered opt multiple times on this channel it's open open model weight is not available the biggest model weight is not available i think i would like to ca ca clear the point that they've mentioned research is only here the biggest opt model i think it's 175 billion or something so the biggest opt model is not available but the smaller opt models are available in hugging fish model hub you can literally use it on google collab notebook okay but it's a non-commercial license pythia it's all open but it's not compute optimal training cerebras gpt their pitch is that it's open it's also compute optimal training and it is under apache 2.0 license now what are these models like why is it different why are they keeping on saying that it is computing um, compute efficient model okay so large language models of two groups one is from these big very big corporates uh, like openai deep mind and their models are trained on private data to achieve highest accuracy we do not have access to the private data but some in some cases the model training weights are available in some cases the model training weights are not available in this case both gpt4 and deepmind chinchilla the model training weights are not available pre-trained model weight is exactly what you would use to do inference like if you just want to do inference the second group of model is models like meta opt and Uluthers pythia which are open source but not trained in a compute optimal manner it's not computationally efficient so now what is happening with uh, this particular model here is cerebras gpt is you can see the red color line that it is actually computationally much more efficient than pythia and that's exactly what this curve shows so lower curves lower curve like lower curve means greater computation compute efficiency for a given loss level for an for, for a given error rate for a given loss level you can see the cerebras chart being lower than the pythia chart so or anything else so you can see that it is computationally efficient 
ha- with the same level of error um, loss level. So now with all the informations, uh, I think it is very important to note that this model is available for anybody to use. All you have to do is go here into Hugging Face Model Hub and then start using the model that is available. Like whatever model that you would like to pick, you can pick. So the model architecture actually follows DeepMind's chinchilla architecture. That's why they could actually manage to do the compute efficient training that they have been talking about. So huge kudos to Cerebras for open sourcing or talking about how they trained the model, like the model architecture and the details. And also that they have actually released the model weights literally on Hugging Face model up for anybody to use. This is quite brilliant and I cannot wait to test this model. And the final one that almost everybody is super excited about is uh, GPT-4 all, GPT-4 all. So this is a model that you can literally train on your computer. If you have got Mac, if you have got your laptop, if you've got Windows, if you've got Linux, you can literally run this model on your local computer today. No hidden cost, no fancy, you know, requ- submit a request form, download Llama weights here, nothing like that. You can literally go use this model. How you can use this model, all you have to do is download the CPU quantized GPT-4 for all model checkpoint here from here. And once you keep that down, like you basically have to replicate or clone the repository, place this model inside the chat directory and that's it. You have to open your command prompt or terminal or shell based on whatever OS that you have and run this, this model will run. Quite amazing. Now, what is this model? So this model is uh, once again, Llama, Uh, even though Facebook has not still released Llama, I think Llama is quite prevalent at this point. So you can see it's Llama based model. It's, uh, it's, it's trained on, I think it's trained probably on Alpaca, I guess. So I don't know the details. Yeah. So probably there is somewhere Alpaca again. That's why they could actually do this thing. But overall, this is another important model GPT for all that can run, that can run on your local computer, even on laptop, M1, M1, non M1, Intel machines, all these things. And you can see how the model's performance is like, it has the same chat interface that we are used with the chat GPT. And this is, I think, one of the most interesting models at this point. The, the fact that this model is um, you know, quantized and it can run on your local machine makes it completely a no-brainer to just try out immediately. So, so far in this video, we have discussed three models. And uh, in, in fact, like if you want to know more about GPT-4 all, you can look at the technical report of this model. So it, it actually has the details about how this model has been trained and what kind of information and uh, how this model has been actually built. And it is from a company called uh, or a group called nomic.ai. So once again, kudos to them here. You can actually see all the data collection, all the details about how this model is being built. But if you just want to use this model, go to this repository. And like I said, all you have to do is download the model weights, clone the repository, place the model weight inside the chat folder, and then start running this command. I would definitely make a separate tutorial on how to run this model on your local computer. But we have so far discussed three models, Dolly, Cerebras GPT, a family of models and GPT for all. And these three, all three of them have really set a new milestone in trying to create the open source chat GPT or open source GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 models. I think it is really good for the entire community to try these models locally. And it is probably going to take the entire research around these models, like making these large language models efficient enough to run on local machines locally without having powerful GPUs. I think this is this is quite good. I'm quite amazed by it. The purpose of this video is to give you an introduction to these three models so that you can try out these models, even if I'm not making the actual hands on tutorial early on. So let me know what you think about these models. Let me know if you would love to actually run these models locally or you still prefer running everything on ChatGPT or you don't care about locally running a model. Let me know in comment section. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.